This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I think maybe the word we both were looking for about Ricky uh, not starting to happen, maybe it's accountability. Do you think that's a good word? I mean, when a guy plays that kind of minutes, you got to, and he's not performing up to his usual level, you got to hold him accountable. Is that is that maybe what you're going for? Yeah, I mean, I I just think that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't. I. What's the question, Bob? <laughs> well, I mean, do you feel like, hey, you know, whether it's Ricky or whoever. If he's playing big minutes and he's, you know, he's a minus 18, you sit him down to start the half because you, you want to hold him accountable. Is that? Yeah, is I mean, that... I, yeah, I think that's fair. Oh, okay, maybe could you stand on that a little bit? And also, I thought Ricky had a pretty mature approach. Some guys, you know, they don't take that too well. And he came back and played, you know, exceptionally well in the second half. Just what do you think about the maturity and how he handled that? Yeah, no, I, I thought um, he, ha you know, he handled it the, the right way. Um, cause you know, I think anytime that, um, a role changes or whatever, you always want to be ready when called upon. And I thought when he went in, in the second half, he was phenomenal. Um, but you know, there's also gotta be a certain, uh, trust factor between, you know, player and coach that, that, cause I mean, we were still down in the half. Like, I mean, we, we need, you know, I mean, he's one of our best scorers. He's one of the best in the in the, in the SEC at creating his own shot. So we certainly needed, um, you know, we needed Ricky to perform well, whether he started in the second half or not. So do you go to him in the locker room and say, hey, Ricky, you're not starting a half? Or how, how do you handle that? It didn't quite go like that, but. Um, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> when Joseph, you're starting, Ricky, you're not starting. Okay. That, that's that's clear to the point. I like that. And then actually, I think Scotty's honored, but I think he's got an ill child at home. Um, he's caring for, but he wanted to know about uh, Makai's rim, you know, his shot block and run he's been on and what you think, I guess, what it, about his rim protection in that regard. And then, then the matchup against, I don't know if you say a br broom or bromie or the, the big kid at Auburn uh, that's doing so well for them. Yeah. Uh, Makai's done a phenomenal job for us, blocking shots, protecting the rim uh doing a great job rim rolling um you know and then certainly you know number four uh and number 44 you know cardwell is a returner and, and uh four is a is a is a transfer both those guys are really good shot blockers excellent around the rim um you know they they're different players at at that center spot but both bring great qualities uh for for coach pearl's team and um you know in this league you you know you've got to you've got to have bigs uh in order to to win at a at, at a high level and and certainly um with, with auburn's front line uh because williams number two's played well and um chris moore has done a really good job number five and Flanagan's play he played really well yesterday against Georgia so I think it's a cross the board their front lines really good and 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 Makai's done a great job for us rebounding defensively like I said he's done a good job rolling and catching the ball in traffic um, off our pick and roll game and and certainly done a really good job protecting the rim. You talked about trust a minute ago. What kind of increased trust that maybe you and the coaching staff and the, and the players ha have in Joseph? And I, I assume he's probably earned earned more minutes moving forward. Yeah, Joseph's. I mean, he's done it. You know, he's done what you would hope, um, which all of our guys have. You know, staying ready, um, getting shots up, getting reps up. Um, you know, taking practice serious. Um, you know, I, I think all of our guys have done a really good job of that. And then he got an opportunity. I mean, his, you know, Joseph's strength is, is an area that we've struggled in. And, um, you know, he, he can make threes. He can stretch the defense out. He's got a really quick release. Um, you know, and, and at times we've really needed perimeter shooting. And so he, he's been able, you know, uh, he was able to provide that um for us um you know and some other nights it might be a different type player that's needed i mean you know in our san diego state game 
you know, Barry Dunning played, I think, seven minutes in that game because um, we, we needed, you know, some physicality and some, some length, um, you know, and, and needed a guy that could guard kind of a 3-4 against San Diego State based on some foul trouble. So um, you just never know when you're going to be called upon. You just hope that, you know, when you go in, you, you know, that you, that, you, that you can produce and help the team. Okay, I've got a couple more, but I'll turn it back to Mike. Thanks, Eric. Hutch? Yeah, Coach, I'm curious if you've maybe been able to pinpoint a reason behind y'all's slow offensive starts the last couple of games and maybe what y'all are going to maybe focus on uh, at practice the next couple of days to, to help that against Auburn. Yeah, I don't think we'll – I mean, we're not going to be able to solve a whole lot of problems because, to, obviously, you look at the minutes that – you know, it's not just the minutes that guys are playing, but – you know, the other thing too, Hutch, is when you're, you know, when you're down two players, that means there's more reps going to players that play high minutes. Cause one of the, one of the, you know, reasons that, um, you know, like maybe at Nevada, we had a lot of walk-ons, um, uh, you know, you're able to, to do, to get more reps spread out, but you're still able to cover a lot of things. And, um, with a smaller roster, everybody's kind of getting reps. And so it's, you know, you, we're not going to be able to go long today. And then tomorrow, you know, we'll shoot once we get to, to Auburn, but we're, you know, we're not going to be able to, you know, it's a travel day. And um, there's a reason it's 40 minutes. I'd certainly rather be playing better in the, in the second half and closing games out than, and playing really bad and at the end of the game and <laughs> and playing great out of the gate. That's fair. And also going back to Makai, uh, we've noticed that it seems like he scores y'all's first points almost every game the last several, like, month or so. Is that just a coincidence, or is there something about him early in games that y'all like going to? Well, I think you want to reward a defensive – a guy that's a defensive anchor for you. Um you know, and I think that any time you can score or touch the ball, um, you know, Coach Daly used to talk about engagement. You know, you kind of get engaged in the game quickly if you if you feel a part of it. Um, oftentimes in the past, we've tried to, not necessarily this year, but in the past, we've tried to run a, a first play of the game that multiple people touch the ball um, to feel some involvement early on. Uh, so certainly trying to get him uh, going early and then, you know, maybe see a, a, a ton of energy at the defensive end and on the glass becomes important for us to start games off. Curtis? Hey, Coach, you kind of touched on some of this, but you mentioned last night that you guys kind of had that full week of prep for this Missouri game. Now you're on the opposite end of the spectrum with the short turnaround uh, and the travel day. I'm just curious – you know, how do you turn the page quickly after an emotional win and, and then get the level of scout and game preparation that you want to in? I, I've got to assume your staff has a lot to do with that. Yeah, the staff's done a great job. I mean, it, you know, we rotate the preps, um, all three of them. Uh, and, and I kind of like the delivery that all three guys do. Um, you know, Root has got his own approach. Coach Smart has his own approach. Coach Arginal has his own approach. And then you know, we sit together and collaborate on ideas as well and and come up with, with, with a game plan and a plan A, plan B, and a plan C. Um, but, you know, when, when we're on a short turnaround time like this, a lot of it becomes mental, a lot of it becomes video, a lot of it becomes individual meetings, all those things become important, Curtis, as, as we try to, you know, get as much prep in as we can between now and, and game time. Um, you know, in Auburn. And then, you know, you guys are a, a mostly new roster. Auburn has a ton of returners. I, I guess with that in mind, do you expect them to have, I don't know, maybe a little extra motivation or energy given how things played out in the game in Bud Walton last season? Is that something that you talk to the guys about? Not really, you know, because it's just, I mean, we just don't have, you know, obviously Kamani and, and Devante, you know, those two guys were part of it, but um I just think when you get, when you have a new team, you know, there's, there's, 
you know, certainly there can be certain emotions. Um, you know, I was worried about how are we going to play against Missouri, you know, based on, you know, last year, you know, what, the way we played so well, and there was a large, you know, scoring difference in the game at our place, you know, were we going to be focused and, um, and have tremendous respect and, I mean, my wife said that none of them were here. They don't even know the score, coach. Like, why are you, why are you worried about that? And she's right. And I think same thing with this. I mean, I know how good uh, Flanagan is and, and I know, uh, you know, how good Williams is and what a matchup problem number two is. And, and I know the energy that, that Cardwell brings and the enthusiasm that he brings to a, to the home crowd and, and, uh, you know, we know the explosiveness in the backcourt of Green and Johnson, uh, how they can shoot threes and dribble drive. And, and we know that Chris Moore plays with great energy and, and pounds the offensive boards and is a really good cutter and improved three-point shooter. We know Jasper can make threes and puts great ball pressure. And uh, Donaldson, number three, is, has, has played some really good games for a freshman. So all these things you know, but we got to teach our guys who these players are. Cause you know, it's a, it's a new team in, 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 in the sec rotation, so to speak. Bob follow up. <clears throat> yeah, Eric, obviously Auburn had kind of a tough loss at Georgia. Georgia looks like they're a lot better than last year, but they've won Auburn. I'm talking about it's won 26 in a row at home. How big a challenge is it playing in that arena? It's kind of cozy and they get pretty rowdy and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think one, uh, I think everybody in the country knows that uh, playing a road game at Auburn is as hard as anywhere in the country. Coach Pearl and, uh, has done a great job of creating an environment. Um, you know, I, I know the, the last home game they had, I watched it on TV and it looked like they had a great student turnout, even though we all know it's still a school break time. Um, but yeah, that's a really, really hard place to play. Uh, and the record tells you so when you win that many games in a row, uh, in a road that, I mean, that's, that's why it's one of the hardest buildings to, to win on, win in, in the country. And I know they all even out nine at home, nine on the road, but three of your next four are on the road. And I think four of your first six are on the road in the conference is how tough, how tough is that? Yes. I mean, it, like you said, Bob, I think it'll all even out. Um, you know, I think with each road game, our, our younger players and our new roster kind of grows together. Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that the LSU environment was new for all of us, you know, and, and you grow and you learn through those experiences. Um, playing in Hawaii, I think really helped us and, and, uh, love the environment in Tulsa. That was really good for our team. But I mean, I just hope that we keep continue to learn and grow and road games oftentimes help you do that. And, and then we know Nick, I guess, saw a specialist out in California. Any, any update on him? I assume he's still out indefinitely. And Yep. Yeah. There's no update. Um, you know, has seen a specialist, uh, uh, remains in a, in LA and, um, you know, I, I would assume that that'll be, you know, the case for, you know, the next, not to speculate, but I mean, that's probably going to be the case for, you know, throughout the rest of the month. And, and then, you know, where it is at that point, probably, you know, reevaluated, but, but certainly, um, you know, not the expectation uh, that he'll play in the, in the, in the, you know, next few games. So do you mean he'll be in California through the end of the month? You just mean he'll be indefinite for the foreseeable no, future? He's, he's in California right now today as we speak. Yeah, but I mean, you said something like you assume that would be the case for the rest of the month. You mean he's going to be in California all that time? No, no, I'm saying he's, uh, we can anticipate that he will not be playing. Uh, I got you. You know, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not always the sharpest knife in the drawer. So th th thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. 
Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts. <laughs> 